OK, so here's how we would conduct an analysis of variance using RStudio. And what I'm going to be doing is analysing the yield data according to three different types of fertiliser and this data were provided and analysed by uh, Graphen and Hales. So the first thing we would do is import our data uh, and I've imported it already. Uh, it's fertilizer common delimited file and uh, here is the data how it looks in terms of the overall structure. Uh, you'll see that we have 10 observations of uh, the yield with one type of fertilizer, 10 with the second and 10 with the third. Now, the first thing we should be thinking about in an analysis of variance is plotting our gra graphs and relationships. So this is what we're going to be doing using strip chart. Now, strip chart is a way of uh, depicting the data, but for closely overlapping data, what we have is a slight jitter uh, introduced. And here I have a jitter of 0.04. So uh, here what we have is the data all laid out with fertilizer type 1, 2 or 3 and there we have the yield in tons and it's all done with this simple command uh, strip chart. So it appears that the yield is slightly higher on average in uh, fertilizer 1 but can we be confident of this? What we would then next do is fit a analysis of variance model, a general linear model to the data. So this is what we're going to do now. We'll call the result of that fit analysis and that uh, analysis is an object with uh, many different properties but you'll see that what we have here is yield uh, is related to fertilizer and you'll notice importantly that I have used as factor we can simply use factor if you like for fertilizer because if not with this linear model it would treat fertilizer as a continuous value since we have used 1 2 and 3 rather than a B and C in this case so we've got yield, we've got the fertilizer, and here we've got where the data actually comes from. It's from fertilizer CSV. So we've now fitted our linear model, but what we would like to do is to understand the structure of that fitted model. So here what we do is we call up the ANOVA for that analysis. And what you'll see here is the partitioning in terms of sums of squares and degrees of freedom that you were introduced to in the theory. Two estimates of the population variance, one judged from the variability between the uh, fertilizers and the other uh, uh, generated by an estimate of the variability within the fertilizers. These two happen to be highly significantly different according to the F distribution in that the probability of us getting that test statistic of 5.7 or a more extreme if the null hypothesis was true is really very very small. So we reject the null hypothesis that the population means uh, are all equal. Now um, before we can really uh, confirm that uh, uh, interpretation, what we really need to do is to look at the plots to see whether in fact our assumptions underlying the fit of the analysis of variance model are indeed valid. So let's have a look uh, first of all at the plot of uh, the residuals and here what I'm saying is plot and this object of analysis has many different features including an ability to plot the residuals uh, and that's the very first plot so I'm saying which equals one and here you'll see the residuals they happen to be the standardized residuals versus the fitted uh, values these are the predicted uh, values of yield for each of these different uh, cases and what we can see here uh, is that uh, the uh, um, overall variance is uh, relatively homogeneous for all levels of those uh, fitted uh, values. Now that's one assumption. The other assumption of course is that we have uh, 
um, normality in terms of the overall distribution of residuals. And here we can use a QQ plot to uh, uh, evaluate this particular assumption or actually look at the distribution of the residuals themselves. For a QQ plot, which is a quantile quantile plot, if indeed we have a normal distribution, if we follow the normal QQ plot, then it would follow a straight line. Here we have something of a cause to uh, be worried about because uh, quite clearly there is a bit of a skew in our data in that we have a little bit of a tail up here where it's not sticking overall to that straight line. So let's visualize that uh, more directly and uh, we can first of all define the residuals, uh, the standardized residuals uh, off that uh, model fitting, uh, simply uh, calling up a variable name sresids and our standard is the function for extracting those residuals and then we're going to simply plot the histogram of those residuals and this is what we see here. So um, although we don't really have that much data uh, to uh, really evaluate this assumption of normality there does seem to be something of a positive or right hand uh, skew in these data but nothing too much to get concerned about. So up above, we have found that there's a significant effect of fertilizer, i.e. that the probability of us getting that test statistic or a more extreme if the null hypothesis is true is really very small. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So the fertilizers do seem to give different yields. But wherein lies the difference? Uh, perhaps just one of the yields, according to one of the fertilizers, is different from all the rest, or maybe they're all different. We can address this question by doing so-called post hoc tests and the post hoc test that I'll be calling up is the two key honestly significant difference test. Here it is, two key HSD and what we're going to be doing is calling up AOV analysis. That's the uh, analysis of variance, another form of doing an analysis of variance uh, on that overall analysis and this is what we uh, find with the two key HSD test. What we can see uh, here is that the big difference lies between uh, two and one and yet we can't really reject the null hypothesis that there is no difference between three and 1 and 3 and 2. So 2 and 1 are really the ones that differ from one another and we can see this if we go back uh, to our original plot here with 2 and 1 contributing most to that overall difference uh, between fertilizers rather than 2 or 3.